Hi, thank you for joining me on the isopod vlog today. I'm just finishing up feeding some of the isopods, giving them some of the shrimp. I wanted to talk to you today about one of the most important aspects of keeping a healthy isopod culture. Obviously, you have to start with healthy isopods, but there's other factors that are really important as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of our cultures, and uh, I'll talk about the most, probably the most important aspect of keeping a healthy isopod culture. Here's our powder blue uh, culture. And you can see how I have it basically set up in some of our powder blues sitting under some of these uh, pieces of cork bark. There's a good group here. So you can see this enclosure is set up with a lot of leaves. There's a really good uh, portion of the culture. A lot of leaves, substrate, sphagnum moss. So today we're going to talk about probably what I feel is the most important aspect of of this culture and other than healthy isopods obviously. So today we're talking about how to set up your initial isopod culture with the right substrate. The isopod vlog. Provide is so important and here's why. It maintains the moisture for the isopods, it gives some hiding spaces, and it's also a food source. Here I'm getting the very first component together. This is a hardwood uh, pellet used in grilling, outdoor grilling. You can get this at any of the home improvement stores. Make sure when you get this, you don't buy one that has additional ingredients, uh, hickory, smoke, uh, any type of a different barbecue flavoring. We're gonna go ahead and add these wood pellets to the uh, substrate, but first you have to break them down. You can try to crush these, but the best way to do it is to add water first. Mix it around, let it sit for a couple of hours, then you can go in and break down the component. You want the consistency to be about like uh, sawdust. Our second component is going to be this Zilla Jungle Mix. I like this so much more than uh, like a koi fiber, a peat moss substrate. You might want to make your cut at the top of the bag instead of the bottom of the bag like I did. Our third component is going to be this Just Naturals Organic Worm Castings Potting Mix. I like this a whole lot. Again, you want to look for something that's organic. You don't want any kind of a fertilizer or any kind of an additive uh, added to this uh, mixture. Another item that we'll be adding to the enclosure, you can mix it in with the uh, components that we've already talked about, but I just put it on top of the substrate. This is sphagnum moss. This is a real key factor to keep the, the uh, isopods hydrated. As I mentioned before, this substrate will be used not only to keep the isopods moist, uh, and a place to burrow, but also it'll be one of the uh, food sources for the isopod. So we mix in uh, hardwood leaves into the mix as well. As a final addition to the enclosure for the isopods, we like to put in some uh, decaying wood. This will give them protection, hiding places, but again, it'll also be a food source. I've gone through some of my smaller isopod containers and marked them for separation. Uh, the colonies are just getting a little bit too big for these small boxes. So we'll go ahead and uh, set up uh, other containers and go ahead and move them. Let's go ahead and jump over to the containers and I'll show you how I set them up. You can use any size container. This one that we're looking at right now is a 27 quart. I've put four holes on the top. I've put uh, four holes in the sides of the container as well, which we'll see in a second. I use a uh, inch and a half uh, drill bit to make these holes and then I uh, hot glue some uh, screening on top. You, for the screening, you can use uh, cheesecloth or any kind of a chiffon. And the purpose of this is to just keep out uh, smaller bugs. We're ready to add the mix. Here I've added the uh, broken up uh, wood pellets, I've added the uh, worm castings, and I've added the Zilla Jungle Mix. Measurements are anything but exact, but I add one part pellets to two parts Jungle Mix to two parts of the worm casting. We'll give it a real good mix, and as a result, you can see the depth is about an inch and a half or so. Again, this doesn't have to be exact. One note I'd like to add here is that uh, the deeper the substrate, the more stable it's going to be. As you add the moisture, it's going to maintain that moisture level for a, a longer period of time. The next step is to add dried leaves. We like to collect those leaves in the fall, put them in bags, throw them in our garage, and let them sit over our uh, winter time. That removes any of the, the pests that might be introduced into the culture. We crumble up the leaves, we add it to the substrate. This gives the isopods another food source. 
This food source is really the main source of food for the isopods. So again, we mix it into the substrate, but then later on we'll add some dry, dried leaves to the uh, top of the substrate as well. As one of our final steps here, we, you can see that I've already added the, the uh, sphagnum moss to one side of the container. I put that on the container that has the fewer holes in the sides to maintain that humidity. I've also added pieces of bark, uh, pieces of rotting wood. Again, the wood adds a um, element of hiding places for the isopods. The sphagnum moss keeps that humidity up in the uh, enclosure and adds the, the moisture that the isopods really, really need. We're coming down to the last steps here before introducing the isopods, but I remove the bar and I get my sprayer, my water sprayer out, and I douse down the uh, the top of the substrate. I'm going to mix that into the substrate, and I really take a lot of time in, in getting that sphagnum moss moist. So what we're trying to do here is get a moisture gradients for the isopods. Uh, they'll regulate themselves from the dry side, and again, under the... Uh, the bark will stay a little bit moister, and the rest of the substrate, uh, other than the sphagnum moss side, will stay a little bit drier. This level of humidity that you add to the enclosure or that you maintain in the enclosure is so important to specific uh, species of isopods. Really do your research to find out which species need a higher humidity level, higher moisture level uh, than others. Our substrate is moist, our sphagnum moss is wet, I've mixed in the substrate and we're ready to add back in the bark. Here you can see uh, we've also added some of the dried leaves to the top of the substrate. I'm going to go ahead and shake off some of the isopods from our initial culture uh, of Armadillidium nasatum peach variety. Uh, these are really, really fast growing isopodic, great beginners uh, isopod. They're beautiful, nice coloration. And certainly they're a quick breeder. You can see here the size of this culture is just in a few months. It's just really, really taken off. And I wanted to break this culture into two different cultures to allow the initial culture to keep going and this additional culture to, to take off as well. It's almost impossible to get all of the isopods out of an existing culture. So we set up these separate cultures just to allow the, the cultures to expand. And there we have it. Now we have the two different cultures, the old one and the new one. The new culture, we'll uh, make sure that we monitor this culture a little closer than the other cultures for a, a time being. I really hope this video helped. And if you have questions, please leave them below. Hit that like button. Thank you for watching.